me I'm okay. <laughs> we are just talking about kids and moms, and I'm already losing it. I'm losing it. <laughs> we are celebrating Mother's Day all week here on Minnesota Live and on Twin Cities Live. Now, today, we are talking about books for the mom in your life. Sally Letterer from the Metropolitan Library Service Agency is back with some, some recommendations that she has for moms. We're all moms up here, and Kelly and I were kind of looking through some of these. Um, Talking about the fact that you only have four more spring, spring breaks. breaks with your oldest. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> and these books kind of offer different parenting, um, I guess, ways into a parent's life. Your perspective. From, from, you know, understanding that you're not alone to reading about how quickly it goes to really connecting with that bond of, of adult children and parents. Right, right. So you brought some yeah. good ones here. Yeah, an assortment. So starting with the little book of Surviving Motherhood. This is slogan. sort of a, yeah. It's just you can dip into it, and I picked a couple of quotes. It's pages of quotations about motherhood. And this one was, asked to switch seats on the plane because I was sitting next to a crying baby. Apparently, that's not allowed when the baby is yours. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that's kind of cute. Yeah. And they had a very old one um, from Phyllis Diller, who was a comedian you know, ages ago, saying, I want my children to have all the things I couldn't afford then I want to move in with them. Exactly. Yes, right? exactly. exactly. Get them everything and then benefit. But a lot of them are, you know, humorous, but a lot of them are real tear jerkers. Mm -hmm. too, so. Well, and we were talking, no matter how tired you are, right? Like when the new baby comes into your house, you're not getting the sleep you want. The baby's up all the time. This is a neat little thing to have by the bedside because you can open it up. You can read one passage. It's one sentence. It makes you realize you're not alone. Right. It can give you a little inspiration and maybe that little like, I got this. You could read one a night. Right. This is yeah. a great new yeah. mom gift. This is actually a really great gift for uh, someone who has a graduating senior <laughs> might be good too, just to kind of perspective and looking past and looking forward. I like this idea. I do right, too. Right. Tell us about this one. I like this one too. This is good enough is the new per oh, that's oh. Let's Sorry, see. did we switch them? We yeah. got them flipped. That's we'll switch okay. them back. There you go. There. Yeah. <laughs> good enough is it's the new the, perfect. Yep. Ditch the worry. So this is an update of a book that these two women did about 20 years ago. And so then they you know, sent out a new survey to a lot of people. They did some um, roundtable discussions with moms who are also kind of torn because they have, some of them have very high power jobs and some don't, so there's kind of a variety. But it's a lot of case studies, so it'll say so-and-so, you know, lawyer with whatever firm in, in sort of how many kids and what their ages are. And then you know, it'll sort of talk with that person and just get some different perspectives. It is a, a research-based book, so the appendix will include, like, the survey they sent out and transcripts yeah. of the roundtables. So it's, it's very interesting. I think um, there is an acceptance now that, you know, the more you're trying to be the perfect mom, the fact that you care about that means you might already be, be the, the perfect, perfect mom. mom. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that exactly. you're worried about it. Yeah. But, or yeah. maybe even offers a little permission to kind of like let things Relax go. a little bit. Yeah, it doesn't right. have to be up here, but this is really, but really it's so good to hard, Megan. <laughs> I know. Believe you me, I know. <laughs> All right, let's talk yeah. about this next book, Things I Wish I Told My Mother. What's this okay, one? Okay, so this one is actually a fiction. This is not a, a nonfiction, and it's by Sue Patterson and Susan DeLello. Sue Patterson is married to James Patterson, who's a oh, very yeah. um, well-known right. writer, and so she, I guess, took a, took a tip from his massive success that short, very short, three to four page chapters that just read very quickly mm. and are page turners. It's a woman and her daughter. The woman's Dr. Liz, a famous OBGYN, and the daughter is an artist. And Dr. Liz is a perfectionist, always looks great. Um, when they decide to take this trip to Paris, she's got her four-piece matching luggage set, and the daughter has a duffel bag. You know, and they're just opposites. Mm -hmm. And the it has a really, really surprise twist ending to it. Um, so if you start out, keep flipping through, because at the end, it's completely unexpected. Oh, I love those kind of mm -hmm. books. I also That's love good short teaser. chapters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel very much more accomplished at night when I'm reading and my eyes are crossing a little bit. I'm like, yeah. I can just get through one more. <laughs> yep, but exactly. I love this, so I'm, I'm going to read that. I think this yeah. one speaks to me. It goes so fast. Yep. Tell us about yep. this book so and why you chose it. Mary Louise <laughs> Kelly, um, she's a journalist correspondent for 
um, NPR, and she has two sons, and when she decides it, they're 15 and 17, so the older one, I think, is Alexander. He's going to be leaving for college in a year, and she's like, okay, I've spent every year saying, next year I'm going to go to more of the soccer games, and next year, next year, next year, and now it's the last year for the older son, so she, but she has a, you know, travels a lot for work and things, and so it's just, it's pretty fraught, and it has a lot of the tension between the expectations for her yeah. and her mm -hmm. job, and also her determination to make the most of this this particular year. She's a mother who works for NPR, as you said, and she works evenings, and so her son's, oh. you know, games are at four and practices are at four, and she's like, I've got work to right. be at, and so it's that 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 pull and that struggle of like having this career and having your own identity as a, as a mom and as a woman, mm -hmm. but also realizing that, oh my gosh, my kids are gonna be gone in one more spring break. Stop. And now yeah. I've, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, I think that like, looks really great. Oh wow, that does sound great. Okay, right. we've got one more. Yep. The rainbow comes and goes. Tell us about this one. Right, so this is Anderson Cooper. Again, it's kind of a theme, I guess, with media people, but he is, uh, a pretty well-known reporter, uh, correspondent for CNN and CBS. Mm -hmm. And his mother, Gloria Vanderbilt, may be even better known. Um, she was a, a very famous sort of uh, jeans designer was one thing she did, but she was sort of a socialite. Um, she had a very hard childhood. And he, she's got to be 91 and had a health scare. And he was like, oh my goodness, you know, what am I doing, like not, you know, getting to know her better and yeah. things like that. Wow. And so they start in a, the course of a year, they do an email correspondence back and forth. Aww. And so when you're reading it, it'll have like his, in a different font, sort of like, you know, darker font, his emails and then her responses and their, you know, conversations. So he back learns about her through email like this. I guess when you yeah. sit down to write, really things just start to pour out. And you yeah. might learn more than listening to someone tell you. Right, yeah, and then it turned out, even though she was 91, then she did live four more years till she was 95, and so their relationship um, really was enriched, and oh, they had wow. some time to mm -hmm. you know, enjoy their new relationship. But he found out all kinds of things about her and her life, and um, they both had some very family tragedies that they'd shared, yeah. but not shared at this level. Yeah. So it's a pretty, um, you know, emotional journey for them. I think you knocked it out of the park with these picks yeah. today, from new parent to, you know, parent of, of teens to I think you've just done a really remarkable mm -hmm. job. So thank you, Sally. Oh, sure. Thanks, Sally. Appreciate it.